John here, and uh, today bringing you my review of the 1992 flick, Sneakers. A uh, really good film. Enjoyable, if you want to say techno-thriller slash caper flick. A really good cast. I mean, you have a very good ensemble. You got Robert Redford in the film, Dan Aykroyd, Ben Kingsley, Mary McDonnell, River Phoenix, City Portier, David Stratheran. And the plot... And sort of, you know, going off the back here, too, you have Robert Redford, who plays his character Martin Bishop, and he's a computer expert, and he leads a team of renegade hackers. You have Sidney Portier, his character in the film, who's a former CIA employee. You have Dan Aykroyd, you know, his character, sort of a gadgets wizard. You have River Phoenix, his character in the film. He's the young, the young guy of the group and sort of a genius. You have David Strathairn, his character is a blind sound man. Like, even though he's blind, he's very good at picking up sounds, and, you know, he can still work on a computer, but, like, his keyboard is in Braille. So you have these group of guys, and they are routinely hired to test out security systems. But Bishop's past uh, comes back to haunt him when you have these two government agents... Uh, they blackmail the sneakers. Now, from what I understand, uh, sneakers is sort of a term for these black hats where you'll have a group of guys and each person specializes in some kind of area, whether it be hacking or, you know, telephones, uh, you know, communication. And they sort of work together to either, you know, break into certain places or you know, retrieve a certain item or a piece of technology. So that's what these guys are. Um, and they're blackmailed into carrying out a covert operation, uh, tracking down an elusive black box. And along with his former girlfriend, who's played by Mary McDonald, uh, Bishop's team retrieves a box and they make a stunning discovery. Uh, the device can break into any computer system in the world. And with factions from all sides willing to kill for the powerful box, uh, Bishop and his team embark on their most dangerous assignment ever in this exhilarating high-tech caper. And that's pretty much the plot. Now, the guy who directed this film, Phil Robinson, uh, before this he directed Field of Dreams. And he also would go on to direct Some of All Fears, which I have heard of, which I've never seen, but I've heard about the film. And he's also, I mean, not only did he direct, but he also wrote the script with these two other writers, uh, Lawrence Lasker and Walter Parks. Now, Phil Robinson, uh, before this, before this film, he had written Rhinestone. Yeah, the same guy who directed this film wrote Rhinestone with uh, Stallone and Dolly Parton. <laughs> uh, and I wrote this down, too. He would uh, have some... Apparently he worked on Fletch and the writing, but it was uncredited, like uncredited work. Uh, Relentless, which I've never heard of, but apparently there's these films called Relentless, and I think like Relentless 2, and there was like four of these that were made back in the day, because I looked it up in IMDb, um, which I, again, never heard of, but he wrote all four of those. Uh, Ghost Dad with Bill Cosby. Uh, the Chamber, he wrote that. Uh, the Steve Martin film, All of Me, he wrote that as well. But I thought Phil Robinson did a great job here with the direction of the film. And, you know, I thought the script was very crisp and, you know, clever at times with the, you know, the way they handled the characters and the dialogue. But getting to the cast, I mean, you have Robert Redford in the film, who's our lead character. What more can you say about Robert Redford? I mean, he's had a great career. I mean, Butch and Sundance, Jeremiah Johnson, um, The Natural, which I do have. I'm trying to think of the ones that I have. <laughs> I don't have all the President's Men, but I would like to get that someday. Uh, I did pick up a couple of Redford films recently, The Last Castle and Spy Game. So, you know, trying to find more Redford for the collection. And again, I thought he did great as the lead character. 
Uh, you have Sidney Portier in the film. Again, his character was part of the CIA. He was fun. Dan Aykroyd, you know, Ghostbusters, Blues Brothers. I mean, what more can you say about Dan Aykroyd? And he was fun in the film as well. And it's funny in the beginning, Dan Aykroyd and Cindy Portier have this sort of, they have a scene where they're talking on the phone and Dan Aykroyd's like, you know, like he th he's one of these theory guys. And he's like, oh, the CIA was in this country, you know, right when this earthquake hit. And Cindy Portier is like, oh, so you think the CIA had something to do with that? So he hung up on him. He's like, I can't talk to that guy. So you have that sort of... The film has a sense of humor to it. Like, even though it's a thriller, it does have a good balance of humor between these characters. Like, also in the beginning, David Strathern's character, he's going through a Playboy, and it's all in Braille. And I'm like, I never thought of that before. I'm like... So little fun bits like that. You know, flipping through the Playboy, and it's all in Braille. Um, yeah, River Phoenix in the film. Rest in peace, River Phoenix. I mean, great actor who sadly passed away a year after this was made. So this is this wasn't his last film, but it was one of his last films. Uh, I mean, Stand By Me, he was in, you know, Running on Empty. Great actor. Um... And again, he was good in the film as a sort of, you know, the young guy of the group. He was sort of the kid, the genius type. You know, he's one of these guys, characters where, you know, he could talk his way through a situation or into this building. You know, he's one of those guys. Um, and again, I thought he was good. You also have Mary McDonald in the film who is the ex-girlfriend of Robert Redford's character. I thought she was fine. You have Ben Kingsley in the film, who is our villain, but they bring him, like, he comes in to, like, the second half of the film. I mean, you see kind of the plot, because the film opens up with Robert Redford and Ben Kingsley in the 60s, and they got... Pretty much Ben Kingsley's character gets thrown in jail. Um, so he tries to get back at Robert Redford for what happened in the past. And Ben Kingsley's fine. I mean, there's not a whole lot to his character. I would I would say that's one thing. Um, again, Ben Kingsley's fine, but maybe... I, I thought the villain was just there at points. But, you know, acting-wise, Ben Kingsley's fine. I just... Maybe I would say that's probably, <clears throat> you know, like a weak point, perhaps. But, I was trying to think, what else? I mean, a lot of fun rapport between these characters. I mean, especially this group of, you know, guys right here. A lot of fun, you know, banter and rapport. And, you know, the dialogue. They have some fun bits of humor. Um... There's this one scene that comes to mind when Robert Redford is sneaking around this room and this woman walks in on him and he's trying to explain his way. He's trying to get out of the situation. So I think like Sidney Portier and David Strathern's character, they're trying to talk to him because they're, they were spying on this room and they kind of, they see what's happening. So they're feeding him words, you know, through the mic and, uh, yeah, that's a fun scene. And I guess we can talk about the box office a little bit. Because I did pull up some information. Let's see here. Okay, the budget for this film was $35 million, And box office, it made $105 million. So it was a pretty decent sized hit when it came out. Uh... Reception, the film received positive reviews. L.A. Times uh, said a caper movie with the most pleasant sense of humor, a twisting plot, and a witty, hang-loose tone. Roger, Roger Ebert wasn't impressed by the film. Roger Ebert gave it two and a half stars. 
Um, saying that it's sometimes an entertaining movie, but a bit thin. So, currently holds 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. As far as the production, some history about the film. Uh, Lawrence Lasker and Walter Parks first conceived the idea for sneakers back in 1981 while doing research for war games. In early drafts of the film, the character of Liz was a bank employee rather than Martin's ex-girlfriend. The role was changed because Lasker and Parks believed that it took too long for her character to develop. Once Robert Redford was attached to the picture, his name was used to recruit other members of the cast and crew, including the director Robinson, who had a little initial interest at first with the project, but always wanted to work with Refford. At one point during the project, Robinson received a visit from a man claiming to be representatives of the Office of Naval Intelligence, who indicated that for reasons of national security, the film cannot include any references to a handheld device that can decode codes. Robinson was highly, highly concerned as such a device was key to the film's plot. But after consulting with a lawyer from the film studio, he realized that the visit had been a prank instigated by a member of the cast, possibly Denai Goyder, Robert Redford. So that's funny. Um, yeah, the film was a box office success, grossing over $105 million worldwide. So... Yeah, it came out September 11th, 1992. So for a fall release, it made some, it made a decent profit. And yeah, I mean, you just take a look at this cast, and you can see why. But you know, all in all, with this film, sneakers, and I know it's getting bright in here, but yeah, sneakers. Really good film. I mean, it's a the the script has a very crisp script, you know, great banter between these characters, and I really enjoy this cast. You know, capable direction from Phil Robinson. There is a couple of features up here, and it's getting very bright in here. Yeah, the sun's not now. The sun's coming out. It's been raining most of the day, and now the sun wants to come out, but. Talking about the features, you do have a commentary with the writer and director, along with the other two writers, um, with the film um, on the film. You have a making of documentary on this DVD. I think it's like 40 minutes long. I did watch a little bit of it, but I didn't watch the whole thing. But you do have a documentary on this DVD. So, a couple of good features. I don't know if this is out on Blu-ray or not. Um, but, like I said, at the end of the day, sneakers, it's a really good, you know, techno, like techno thriller sort of caper film. And at the same time, has a good sense of humor to it. You know, good bits of humor between these characters. Very good script. And, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So, that's my review of sneakers. Yeah, the sun is going in and out. But that's my review of sneakers. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.